The Residence Cascade is the kickoff event of the entire Half-Life universe. This sporadic cutscene features explosions and Black Mesa as it gets linked with the hostile Zen universe. However, this spectacular cutscene has kind of lost its charm. Don't get me wrong, Half-Life is still an incredible game, and the gameplay still holds up today. But let's just say, 1998 was not the best year for video game graphics. So if you don't want to sit through this cutscene, you're not alone. Speedrunners try their best to avoid these downtimes. So, let's take a look at how world record holders deal with the Resonance Cascade. First things first, let's talk about why the Resonance Cascade is so slow. When Gordon first enters the chamber, he has to wait over two minutes before getting the crystal sample. Of course, the waiting is accompanied by the scientists spitting science jargon. Once the crystal collides with the anti-mass spectrometer, the cinematic experience really starts. Green flashes, teleporting monsters, you know, the whole natural disaster thing. This chaos takes a little over a minute. And it doesn't even end there. Once Gordon recovers in the test chamber, there's another minute spent where the player listens to some Black Mesa scientists. After all of this waiting, the Half-Life experience we know and love truly starts. So for speedrunners and glitch hunters, there's obviously a lot to unpack when it comes to this cutscene. But let's start with the low-hanging fruit first, as skipping the scientist reunion is definitely the best place to start. There is a window overlooking the test chamber, and if the player were to crawl through this window, they would be in the control room, and would be able to progress while leaving the scientists in the dust. The only problem? Height. This window is really high up, so we're going to have to get creative in order to skip this cutscene. The bad news here is that we don't have any weapons, so explosive boosts of any kind are out of the question. The good news is that hostile enemies still have their weapons. Specifically, Vortigons have an attack where they fire a powerful laser which knocks Gordon back, and believe it or not, there are real Vortigons in the test chamber. They spawn in air, and despawn when they hit the floor. They might be used as decals, but they're the real deal. By simply standing on a landing spot of a Vortigaunt, Gordon can stop them from hitting the ground. As a result, the Vortigaunt will never despawn. Since the game doesn't anticipate this obstruction, the Vortigaunt will stay still in the air, even when Gordon walks away. With this in mind, the player can preserve a Vortigaunt in the perfect spot to boost Gordon into the window. The only problem? The cutscene still runs its course, and as a result, Gordon will get teleported out of the test chamber. This gives the player no time to set up a boost. To bypass this teleportation, we're going to have to look at this cutscene on a more technical level. There is a massive trigger that encapsulates the test chamber. If Gordon is anywhere in this invisible entity, the player will be teleported. Well, thankfully for us, this trigger isn't infinitely tall. In fact, it stops right here, near the top of the catwalk. If we could find a way to get higher than this trigger, we can completely avoid the forced teleportation. Luckily enough, we have one of the best tools for gaining height, a ladder. By angling themselves so that the player is looking down and the ladder is to the left of Gordon, the player can hold A and S to climb the ladder in two directions, giving the player double the speed. If the player also lowers their FPS, the player can dismount off of the ladder and fly all the way up to this light on the wall, which is conveniently outside of the trigger. Once a noise plays indicating what should have been the teleport, the player is safe to fall down and navigate the test chamber without fear of teleportation. By using some more audio cues and a couple of jumps, the player can time a bunny hop onto the Vortigaunt. Combined with the Vortigaunt's laser attack, Gordon lands perfectly into the window, skipping the minute-long cutscene after the disaster. Now don't get me wrong, this strategy is super cool and all, but I think we can do a bit better. Luckily for us, the Valve game developers left a change level trigger high in the sky in the test chamber. This is used to change the map once the cutscene has finished. If we were to touch this trigger, we would instantly finish the entire Resonance Cascade sequence and start the next chapter. So, the question speedrunners ask themselves is how we can get up there. The answer lies in a glitch called the Object Boost. This incredibly powerful glitch functions off of one single bug. Gordon grabs a lot of objects throughout the game, sometimes to solve puzzles, other times just to have fun. For some reason, when the player just taps the grab button, Gordon will have the exact same speed as whatever object he is holding. However, this shouldn't be an issue, as it's not like Gordon can just toss objects across the room. Gordon can move objects fast. Like, really, really fast. There is literally no upper bound to how fast Gordon can yeet objects, so it can bring the player to the game engine's speed cap. 
To put this in perspective, Gordon walks at about 320 units per second, but he can get object boosts at over 2000 units per second, which is over six times faster than the walking speed. By letting go of the grab button and jumping, the player can completely avoid friction forces that slow the player down and can maintain the full speed from pushing the object. Using this glitch, we can gain a ton of speed super quickly, and object boosting is used a ton in the Half-Life speedrun, usually in cool bunny hopping sequences. But how can we use it to hit the change level trigger in the test chamber? Well, thankfully for us, we do have the cart with the crystal sample. We can use this to object boost and get a ton of speed. The only problem is, speed isn't what we want. We want height. However, since Black Mesa really splurged when it came to the decals for the anti-mass spectrometer, there are a lot of sloped surfaces in the test chamber that we could use to transfer our horizontal speed into vertical speed. While this skip was theorized for a long time, it was thought to be too precise for a human and could only be performed by methods that were not allowed on the official speedrun leaderboards. However, this changed when speedrunner Proto Oss discovered a setup that could be performed easily. By doing an incredibly precise lineup, usually using the pixels on the floor textures, the player can land an object boost, slope off of the anti-mass spectrometer, and hit this debug trigger. Landing on a stray invisible wall near the ceiling, the player can cancel some fall damage, and despite the long fall, they can land in the window barely alive, with a single digit amount of HP. While this trick saves over a minute in comparison to the Vortigaunt strategy, it incorporates a frame-perfect input when performing the object boost, as the player needs a precise amount of speed. Since Half-Life runs at 100 FPS, there is only one one-hundredth of a second to land this input. As a result of this precision, many players opt to pause buffer the strategy to get it. And just like that, Gordon completely skips the test chamber, and the resonance cascade associated with it. Well, I guess when game developers leave a level-skipping trigger in the game, they better prepare for unforeseen consequences.